Happy New Year, brothers and sisters. This is Bishop Israel Adea Jala. I want to welcome you to our month of live celebration. Live celebration. Um, I as the scripture that is given to me is from New Living Translation, Philippians chapter 2, verse 16. He said, Hold firmly to the word of life. Hold firmly to the word of life. This whole month I will be teaching on the importance of the word of God, the wonders of the word of God, the powers of the word of God. Uh, the scripture that I want you to use as your prayer is that open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your word. Psalm 119 verse 18. That's the prayer I want you to pray. Because when we start the year with the word, we will end the year with praise. Let me say it again. When we start our year with the word, then we will end the year with praise. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will end this year in praise. Let's start with the word. So right now, let's go join the service that is already going on in the sanctuary as I teach on the importance of the word. Now, before you go, I want you to like, I want you to subscribe, and I want you to share this channel. God bless you. Amen. There is what is called the Shachum glory of God. It comes in whoosh. It doesn't send text. He never sent text. I'm coming. He just comes. That's why he said, watch and and pray. The number of people that were with Jesus were more than 120. But only 120 experienced Pentecost in the upper room. Because those are the people that can tarry for 50 days. How many days? Uh -huh. So the, it's a continual prayer for 50 days. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, the Lord spoke to them. He said, don't go anywhere. You just stay in Jerusalem until I endure you with power from on high. Don't go anywhere yet. Simply because you've healed one or two. When I sent you out two by two, you came back. You said, demon. Said, you, you, you're not there yet. There are certain demons that <laughs> if you don't pray, they will cast you out as you try to cast them out. So he says, stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. But that power on high will not come until 50 days after that day. So they stayed in Jerusalem and for 50 days they were praying. So in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, when it has fully come, the word Pentecost is 50. In other words, on the 50th day, Pentecost is not, it has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Because we are Pentecostals, because you are, you are 50 days old, that's what you are saying. It has nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. What made Pentecost special was that Pentecost is the 50th day after Passover. Are you with me? So 50, they were there 50 days, Pentecost, 50. And on the 50th day, they were, they've been praying. Remember, uh, Jesus already told them, don't go anywhere. Just keep praying. Don't stop. Keep praying. Don't stop. So first day, they pray. Second day, they pray. You can see some people say, I need to go pay my bill. They left. And fourth day, they pray. One guy said, I have not done 40 hours. They left. And they, until the number come down, came down to 120. And that day, the 50th day, they didn't even know anything would happen. They just started praying. And then, it happened. And all of them was like, what was going on? Everybody in the old city was wondering what's going on. And then they said people from Libya, people from Egypt, people from all over the world, all of them were hearing these guys speaking their own language. Why? Because 
when God wants to visit, he does not give a, a notice. He doesn't text us, I'm coming tomorrow. If he does, this sanctuary will be full on that day. You know that? Everybody will ask. He does not give notice. That's why you have to always remember that when it is time for prayer, you go and make sure you are part of it. And that's why you should congratulate the one standing next to you, sitting next to you, sleeping next to you, whatever it is they are doing. Congratulate them and say, thank God you made it. Thank God you made it. I want you to wave to God tonight and say, Lord, let our prayer be answered speedily. Be answered speedily. As I was sitting down there, I went to the back there, and as I was standing there, and the Lord said, when I am going to bring and I'm going to set the fire of revival to, in this nation from this church, I will not announce it. I will just do it. I will just do it. Because God told us that the reason he wants us to pray 366 prayer is because he's about to do new thing in America. And from America, it will go all over the world. Uh, you may not know what you are doing now, but a time is coming that your children will be reading about your history. As we, were, as we are reading about the Azusa Street that brought Pentecostal movement to North America, and a blind black man, black man with one eye, the second eye was blind, William Seymour, and, and, and he will... They won't even let him in the sanctuary because he's a, uh, you know what I mean? He looked like me. He didn't look like them. They won't even let him come inside the sanctuary. So he will be in the parking lot and he will be talking to people, praying for people. And people are getting healed. People are getting healed. Then they notice that people in the sanctuary are getting fewer and fewer. People are going to the brother in the parking lot, and these guys are very smart. They quickly make meeting and say, ah, Brother Seymour, why are you outside? Please come inside. Let us honor you. <laughs> so they, <laughs> that's how they brought him inside. When he got inside, miracles still continue. Are you with me? One of, I remember um, one of the things, well, don't let me say that because uh, in assemblies of God came out of rebellion that they don't want black man to lead them. That was then. That's how assembly broke out of it. No, no black man will lead us. You see, when we read church history, we, some of us need to do extra forgiveness to talk to some people. <laughs> I'm talking of church history now. But my point is, they didn't know the man that God will use their eyes will be on the bishop. Oh, bishop is not there. Oh, bishop is there. But it might be one of the usher. Are you with me? It might be you. The power will just come on you and through you, all of us will be baptized again in the Holy Ghost. Because there is no grandson of God. No granddaughter. We are all what? Children of God. That's why you don't want to minimize the grace of God upon your life. I want you to declare, Father, Father, the time for revival in America has come. Start it right here at Kingdom Connection. Lift up your voice and begin to declare it. The time for revival has started. We, we, we need it again. All over the world, start it right here at Kingdom Connection in the name of Jesus Christ. Ye kakaka broskotoria. Yes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. You may be seated for three and a half minutes, point two, two seconds. Turn with me to Psalm 29. Psalm 29. I want to, I, I believe before we move into next month's theme, next month's theme is what? Eh? 
you, I didn't give you. <laughs> Every year, you know what we do. The first, first year is what? First month is what? The word of God. Second month is what? I'm going to give you. What do you want me to give you? <laughs> you know that February is what? March is what? Prayer. April is what? Holy Spirit. Don't give us. I will give you my belt. Before we move into faith, the reason we, I, the Lord told us to always start our year with emphasis on the word of God is that's what we carry you through the whole year. What the word of God cannot do, you, the Holy Spirit cannot do it. Let me put it straight for you. Because Holy Spirit, we always act on the word. Did you get what I'm saying? Holy Spirit, we always act on the word. The spirit of God was hovering and he was doing nothing until the word came in Genesis 1. Until God says something, the spirit was brooding. Psalm 29, I call tonight very briefly the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. There are two words that we use in and uh, interchangeably when we say the Lord speaks. One is Rema. Everybody say Rema. Rema. The word Rema is, is, is the written word. Re the written word. So this, this is Rema. The Bible is the Rema. Rema. Eh? R-H-R-H-E-M-O. A. Rema. That is Rema. That is what is written. Yet there is another word for the word of God that is the one that we say, and God told me. That one is Logos. Are you with me? Logos. Logos, in, as, as, as far as New Testament is concerned, Logos is subjective. To the hearer. So when people say the Lord told me. In the Old Testament. It is not subjective. Because their life was on the line. If they say the Lord told me this. And it didn't happen. They take the person to the gate. And stone him to death for lying. But in the New Testament. We are told. We are urged to judge it. What this person is saying, does it match the character of God? If it doesn't, you don't kill them. You just ignore them. That's New Testament. Are you with me? So when you hear all this, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, the Lord told me, don't just jump into it. First of all, look at the character of God. You know? The Lord that will tell you to go and slap Mike Tyson must have told an undertaker who will take care of you. <laughs> you. Are you hearing me? God will not say something that will destroy you. God will not say something that will put you in confusion. Sometimes God will say something that will make you uncomfortable. But ultimately, it's to your own comfort. Are you with me? Because the Bible says in him there is no darkness. There is no evil at all. Like Pastor Yemi's tribe would say, at all, at all. There is no evil at all. The voice of the Lord. What voice do you hear? Somebody said to me, say, I kept hearing voices. I said, me too, I hear voice of television. <laughs> I hear voice of people around my neighborhood. I hear voice of my friends. But the biggest and the most important voice I must hear daily is the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. So Psalm 29 uh, from verse 1 says, Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones, 
Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. I want you to watch the progression. Because the voice of the Lord is moving. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes cedars. Can you imagine? Not calf this time. He makes tree to skip like calf. Did you get that? The voice of the Lord can make the tree in front of your house to be jumping. That's what he said. He makes them the cedar. After they splint or splintered, he makes them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord defies the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. And that's where you, you are asking me, what does that mean? You know? So Kadesh, Kadosh. Hmm? The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. And strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says, glory. glory. <laughs> Excuse me. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood. And the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace and will make my bishop men bring me water. Amen. Because sometimes you need to pray for these guys. Open it, open it, open it. <laughs> they, they, they respond to the voice of the Lord. <laughs> Uh, this psalm, Psalm 29, has been called the psalm of the storm. The psalm of the storm. And I have five minutes to speak to you before we pray. The storm that you are in is never above God. Regardless of how difficult it may look. To you, it will take a miracle for some things to happen. But the God of miracle, that's his nature. Miracle is his normal. Because he's above normal. He's supernatural. So this is a psalm of the storm. And if you look at it well, it was David describing the life in and through a storm. The emphasis is not really about the storm. Because whether you like it or not, there are three different ways or positions you can find yourself. Is either you are going into a storm or you are in a storm or you are coming out of a storm. Those are the three places you may be anytime. And I dare not define your storm. I'll let you divine your own storm. You are, your storm is different from your neighbor's storm. Your storm may be, may, may, may be financial storm, while the other person's storm is green card. I will not define your storm, but this is the truth. Every child of God is dealing with either the storm they are coming out of, the storm they are in, and if they have not yet been in a storm, keep living. But regardless of where you find yourself, 
Psalm 29 says, the voice of the Lord is above it. Which tells me that no matter what you are going through, the word of God is above whatever storm that may confront you. He said, look at it. Sometimes, you know, and then if you look at this, this is a moving storm. It's a moving storm. It's not storm that is stagnant. That is why I know whether somebody is in a storm, another one just came out of a storm, somebody else is expecting one. Because it's a moving storm. It's going to touch everybody. He started by saying, in verse 3, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Ah, as a seaman, I have seen storm. I have seen waves that is almost 60 feet tall. Huge thing. This building is not up to 60 feet. That the ship would, would rock, rock. I remember one time the refrigerator in my, my room fell down. Everybody that has ever sailed to Africa will know that there is a place they call the Bay of Biscay. It's always rough. So you brace yourself for it. The voice of the Lord is over the sea. Are you in that place where things are just rocking and rolling? Not stable. Today you are fine. Tomorrow you are rolling. It's almost like you are in a roller coaster. And, and you wake up tired. Go to bed tired. Just dragging yourself. The voice of the Lord is over. The word over means above that waters. Water can also mean overwhelming circumstance. You feel like drowning in a pool of bills, of sickness, of, of relationship, whatever it is. The voice of the Lord is above that. <laughs> then he talks about verse 5. He says, the voice is not just on the sea. Verse 5 says, the voice of the Lord is now on the mountains. Because the cedars are mountainous tree. Cedars of Lebanon are like the um, pines. Is it, what is the one? Alp, Aspen. You know, Aspen in Colorado. You know, you can't find aspen in lowland. It's, it's, it's a mountainous tree. One of the things I found out about aspen is aspen grow from the root. So if you have one aspen, the root will spread and from the root another will bud. So before you know it, you have lots and lots of aspen. He said, so, so, so this, you may find yourself, maybe, maybe you are not at the sea level. Your own is, you are at the mountain top level. There is a storm for mountain, mountain top. I always tell people when you're on the mountain top, expect a different storm. But simply because you're on the mountain top does not preclude you from storm. But regardless where the storm met you, brothers and sisters, the voice of the Lord is above it. Amen. Ah, somebody didn't get what I'm saying tonight. I said the voice of the Lord is above that mountain. You are in a place where you might call a valley, a place where everybody think you are nobody and you are going through your storm, but all of a sudden God promoted you and now you are at the top and then you realize there are some demons also at the top that want to bring you back down but God says, don't need to worry. My voice that took you from the storm in the valley is same the voice that is going to take you through the, 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 mount, the, the, the demons of the high places. He said the God of the mountain is also the God of the valley. Oh, and then he moved from the mountain, he moved to the desert. Verse 8, he moves to the desert, the wilderness. We, 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 we don't have desert in Colorado, but we do have what? 
wilderness. We don't have desert, but we have wilderness. I love, sometimes I love it. Sometimes I don't like it. When I'm doing prayer work, I love it because if I park by the roadside and it's only me and the cows in that wilderness on the way to Kiowa, I love it. Shatarabayaba. Because I know whoever sees me is also scared. <laughs> Do you know that? So I was not scared. I know that whoever first of all sees me is scared. That who is this black man that is doing like this in the wilderness? But I'm talking to my God. I'm talking to my God. Luka Satarabaya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you are the windbreaker, you better be strong. A lot of people want to put themselves at the front. But if you are not a wind breaker, if you are not good at breaking wind, you better be doing ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, at the back. How many of you have seen those uh, birds when they are flying in formation? The one will be in the front and the rest at the back. Ah, ah, um, ah, and you that is downstairs there, they're pooping on your head. Bah, and <laughs> you better be a good wind breaker. And they, they know how to notice one another. They know how to notice the one in front. Once they know that the one in front is tired, he just go down, they fly over him, another take for, and then he's at the back again. Birds are very smart. But we have wilderness. He said the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Wilderness experience. Is anybody in this house going through a wilderness experience? God said me to tell you the voice of the Lord is there too. Is there too. Is it, now, what is the voice of the Lord is saying? What is the voice of the Lord saying? You know, he says, the Lord will give strength. Verse 11. The Lord will give Strength. What strength other than to stop the storm? Uh, the Lord voice that is over the waters is the same voice that is over the mountains, is the same one that is over the wilderness. And, and, and what is he saying? Psalm 10, uh, 29 says, He sat enthroned at the flood, and the Lord sits as king forever. The storm is raging. You are under the storm, but God is speaking above the storm. Do you get it? The, the storm is raging quite all right. You are under the storm, but God is speaking above the storm. That should give you confidence that if God is above my storm, this storm will pass. No matter what your storm is, Let's settle it right now. God is king over that storm. Amen. You cannot afford to belly ache. You cannot afford yourself to be put down with negative thought and be paralyzed because God reigns over the storm. He's still on the throne. He's still in charge. He's still God. He's God yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He will still be God. The idea is that he was on the throne before the storm began. He's on the throne while you are going through that storm, and he will still be on the throne when you are sharing your testimony. Amen. So three things I want you to see. The first thing is this. When you are going through storm, and I saw it here, God speaks to the storm you are in. He speaks to the storm you are in. One time in Luke, uh, um, um, in Mark chapter 4, rather, yeah, Jesus told his disciple from verse 35 to 41, he said, let's cross over to the other side. He, the disciple didn't want to go there. It was God that, that, that it was Jesus that initiated the, the, the journey. And yet they found themselves in the storm. And then when they found themselves in the storm, so, so, so it's possible that you are doing the right thing. It's possible you are actually following God and yet you still found yourself in a storm. Oh, yeah. So what did Jesus do? He spoke to the storm. Peace be still. And if it's the same yesterday, today, and forever, what is he doing to your own storm? He's saying peace be still. So he spoke 
to the storm you are in. But that's not the only thing. He turns to the disciples and he says, where is your faith? Why are you panicking? Because no matter what you are going through after God has spoken to the storm you are in, God is going to speak to you in the storm. He spoke to the storm you are in. He speaks to you in the storm. What is he saying to you in the storm? Don't panic. Got you cover. This one will not be your end. You will not be disgraced. You will not be put to shame. He spoke to, the, to, the, to you in the storm. And, and, and at the same time, you know, you are in the storm. And, uh, Lord, I don't know how this one went. Uh, so he speaks to the storm in you. Because sometimes you are in the storm, but the storm that you are in is not as big as the storm brewing inside you. The fear of how, how am I going to make it? I can't even sleep. Some of you, every time you have a sleepless night, you have a storm going on in you. I sleep like a baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, let me tell you some secret. I snore. That's not the secret. The secret is that my snoring never bothered me. <laughs> Whoever may complain, may complain, but for me, I don't hear it. What, what a grace. <laughs> I remember when people say, ah, daddy, you snow. Ah, papa, you snow. I say, ah, I snow. <laughs> I didn't hear it. <laughs> so if it troubles you, God will speak to you in this talk. <laughs> When you are lying down there and you are, oh, there is a storm brewing in you. Storm of how am I going to make it? Am I losing my job? They are downsizing. 1,000 people have been laid off in our company. Is it my turn? But God will speak to the storm in you. He says, shut up. That's my child. He will speak to you in the storm. He says, you, calm down. And he will speak to the storm you are in. And he will say, peace, be still. I declare today, wherever you may find yourself, whatever storm you probably are going through right now, by the authority in the name of Jesus, the same voice that spoke to the, will, the cedars of Lebanon is speaking to you. And is speaking to the storm you are in. And he's speaking to the storm in you. And he's saying, peace be still. Peace, shalom, shalom. Prosperity, victory in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up on your feet and begin to declare, I receive my peace. I receive my peace. I receive my peace. I receive my peace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I receive Makola Basatari Baba. This is Kingdom Connection Christian Center. Thank you for joining us. We welcome you to watch this message and others again by Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. Live streamed on YouTube and Facebook. Be blessed.